Welcome to the Spectrum of Health podcast. My name's Jav, and today, guys, we've got a very, very special episode. Before I get into it, if you can, feel free to buy me a coffee, hit the link in the bio, and donate. Also, if you are here and you've been enjoying the content that I've been putting out, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Now, I know it's been a while since I've dropped a podcast. There's a few things that's been going on in the background, but we're making it happen. I'm back. I'm not going to get into it. But let's get straight to the real deal and what this episode is going to be about. It's a little bit different, might be a bit weird, but I'm going to be talking about David Beckham. Why is this important? David Beckham can teach us a lot about how to stay fit going into our late 30s and 40s. David Beckham was obviously a legendary player for Man United in England. He obviously went to Real Madrid, played at PSG, AC Milan, went to the States. The quality and the longevity of his career, you know, is one of the highest standards we've ever seen. He's also a very talented human being and also quite business smart and very savvy. But all of those things are not what I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about how even after he's retired, which was nearly, what, over 10 years ago, or almost 10 years ago, I believe, he is still in prime condition. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm gonna put up some pictures of how his body's looking right now. So I'm gonna dive into what he's been doing, how he's managed to keep his body in great condition, and some of the things that we can do as individuals, and especially former athletes, to stay in elite level shape, even when we retire. Because it's more than possible, and I think some people don't really realize how possible it is. The thing about Beckham, and a lot of people have said this, I've read a lot of information about him. I've read a lot about his history. I've read a lot about how he was as a player. And a lot of people say he had an engine. Luckily, I was actually old enough to watch quite a lot of Beckham, especially for England. When he went to Real Madrid, I didn't really get to watch much of him. But I'm old enough to watch him when he was a pretty good player. And it's well known, he could run. He could run for days. And even now, I talk about some of his treadmill workouts. And you know you can find those workouts on Google. You don't know if the athletes actually use them. But some of the workouts he used to do on a treadmill were crazy. So we know he had a very, very good set of lungs. He was very fit. He was very strong. His baseline was so high, even when he retired, that clearly he's been able to manage that and continue doing that. Out of all the retired athletes, I, I can quite easily say David Beckham is one of the best looking ones in terms of keeping his body in shape. You think about Ronaldo, you think about Roberto Carlos, you think about Ronaldinho and all the guys that, you know, he competed with or played with in that era. A lot of those guys are... They're not looking too well in terms of their physique. However, Bex is still lean, mean, and maybe that is to do with his high profile and his image, and it's a part of the image to make sure that he stays lean. Why can't the other guys do that? Why are so many former athletes out of shape? Well, there's a reason, and obviously I've spoken about this before in previous videos and podcasts, but there's a reason Bex can do it, and I'm gonna go into some of that. Before I even talk about what I think he is doing, obviously we've highlighted he's one of the few former athletes that managed to keep himself in shape. A big part of Beckham that people don't realize is his business savviness. And he actually recently invested in a brand called F45. It's actually a gym. It's a class-based gym. It stands for Functional 45 Minutes of Fitness. I used to work at one in Liverpool Street. Those were the days. But he actually became a huge investor. It's Mark Wahlberg's company, the famous actor, the guy who looks like John Cena. Yeah, it's his company. Um, and David Beckham is actually um, an investor, which actually lets us know that David Beckham has a keen interest in health and fitness in itself, which is important because he is also looking after his health and his fitness. So he's living by his brand, which for me, I think is critical. And it's important that you do do that if you... You know, especially if you're a former athlete trying to maintain your shape and especially as he gets older. Bex is now heading into his 40s and then mid 40s. And one thing we do know as men is that every decade in our life, our testosterone levels drop ever so slightly. And the only way to naturally minimize that, unless you're taking drugs and TRT and stuff, well, is to try and keep your body fat nice and low and make sure you've got some muscle mass on your frame. On top of that, he lives a very active lifestyle because of the work he does now. If he's managing a club, which is into Miami, because now he's a chairman in LA, he needs to be performing at the top level in his day-to-day, -day, in his business life. How does that relate to me and you? Well, let's say I've got many men that I work with who are business owners, you travel a lot, you know, you work hard, you've got a corporate job. Those things become 10 times harder when you're 50 or 20 or 30 or 40 pounds overweight. But it's easier when you're, you got energy, you're strong, you're physically fit, your heart's good, your lungs are good. So Beckham is not just thinking about his, how he looks in the mirror. Of course, that's great for his brand deals, but He's also thinking about managing a club and being the head of a brand new football club and being fit and being able to walk in the office with energy and presence. And that's important. And a lot of people don't understand how important that is. I mentioned this, obviously it's been reported that he's had a crazy kind of workout regime. 
as a player. But another thing as well is he basically hasn't stopped that regime. You go on David Beckham's Instagram page right now. What do you see? He's training hard. He's working out. He's always working out. Whether he's, whether he's promoting F45 or he's showing his own workouts, he is always working out. Our experiences are quite simple. Many of us didn't even enjoy, enjoy going to the gym. We only went to the gym because we knew that we had to do a team workout and we knew that doing a team workout would make us fitter and would make us better when it comes to competing. So we only went to the gym with the sole purpose of improving our performance just a little bit so we could perform better in the gym. When that setting and when that drive and when that competition is over and we are retired, there is no reason for us to go to the gym anymore. You lose your purpose. On top of that, you had multiple layers of accountability. You couldn't let your teammates down. You couldn't let your coach down. You couldn't let your strength coach down. You couldn't let yourself down. But now, it's, now that all those layers of accountability are gone, you can let yourself down pretty easily, to be honest. That's one of the biggest differences when it comes to training to compete versus training for health. Um, and I think that once we make that mental switch as athletes, it's easier for us to maintain our physique and our shape when we do retire. Because one day you're going to stop playing sports and you may have pl stopped playing sports already like me. And now I'm in a position where I need to really navigate the waters and make sure that I can maintain my physique, I can look good, I can feel good. And that also comes with setting the standard for yourself. We used to talk a lot when it comes to training about setting standards in training, right? You set standards in practice, like the way we do our passing drills, the way we do our shooting drills, the way we do our warm up, we set a standard, the way we wear our clothes. You need to set a standard for your life beyond sports because in that way, you will never ever get into a position where you're 20 or 30 pounds overweight or, you know, you're cut, you're looking in the mirror and you're like, man, this is, this is not the body that I want. You set yourself high standards and it will permeate in every other area of your life. It's the way that I like to live because for me, the standards that I live by are going to allow me to become the successful person that I want to be. No matter how far behind I am, I'm, I'm always going to have those standards. So it's important that you have that. To wrap this up, I want to kind of talk about what I think Beckham is actually doing rather than what he just posts on his IG because obviously Instagram and social media is like the perfect snapshot of our life. So let's talk about what I think David Beckham is actually doing. For me as a coach, I'm pretty sure I know what he's doing. He's in his mid 40s, I believe, and I coach many guys in their mid 40s too. So Beckham, what could he be doing to maintain this physique? The first thing is his nutrition. I can almost guarantee you Beckham is not drinking beer every single week relentlessly. I'm pretty sure of that. I'm sure his wife wouldn't be too happy. Posh Bex, I'm sure she wouldn't be too happy. Plus she has a standard too, right? Because I'm pretty sure she's in pretty decent shape. I see her working out too. And that's another thing. If you do have a partner if you're not setting standard for her she could be setting standard for you and if that's the case that's going to help drive you as well that doesn't mean that your partner has to be six pack abs chiseled whatever but you're going to do what your partner does your partner's going to do what you do so one of you have to pull each other in the right direction if you've got one partner who's smoking drinking relentlessly you're going to have to be the shining light and pull them into the light and i know some people get real sensitive about these kind of things but it's just the truth victoria beckham is probably a good positive influence on David Beckham. I don't know. I'm just speculating. But anyway, that's off the topic. So what could Beckham actually be doing? Well, firstly, I doubt he's drinking beer every week. So I think he probably has a good handle on his alcohol. The next thing is he's definitely working out at least three to four times a week, potentially five times a week to maintain that physique. It's not like he's overly muscular or he's got like very big muscles, but he's quite lean. So that probably means he's probably eating a pretty good diet, first of all, but he's also managing his training. He probably, he looks like he does a fair amount of cardio and not too much weightlifting, which is good. And that's perfectly fine because it's good for your heart health. It's good for your lungs. It's good for your um, energy. It's good for your mind. So just looking at his physique, I can probably tell he does a lot of cardio, which is very, very good. And I can tell his diet is probably the main thing. So I would say Bex is probably in the gym at the minimum four times a week, maybe five. But I would also say that he does keep a good eye on his diet. Probably not too much processed food, not too much alcohol. And aside from that, some of the basics that all you 40 year olds and 50 year olds need to be doing is getting at least six to seven hours of sleep at night, making sure your steps are nice and high. So activity outside of just the gym is probably one of the most important factors when it comes to weight loss. So not just your 10,000 steps, not just your gym session, but everything around that. Are you sitting down all day like me on this chair right now? Are you moving around? Are you taking an opportunity to get those extra steps in? It's important that you look at all these other areas because that's what's actually going to get you the weight loss goal as well as obviously tracking your food and getting your calories nice and low i think he's probably doing some strength training on top of his cardio as well as that so those things kind of married together is allowing beckham to stay in shape even in his 40s and 50s whereas other former athletes go down the path of maybe being a bit more relentless with their food drinking a lot more eating more fast food and that's understandable you know when you're an athlete you are expected 
to be perfect all the time. You don't get to drink any alcohol. You don't get to eat as much fast food. All those things that were restricted from you back in the days, now you're retired. You can eat as much of that crap as you like. And that does play a big role in your physique. But the problem is your activity levels drop all the way down while your nutrition and your calorie intake stays the same. And that also results in more weight gain when you retire. So it's important that you manage all those factors. But anyway, that's it for David Beckham. I don't usually do things like this, but I just saw his picture pop up on my IG and I was like, this is a good idea, man. Beckham, he's a retired athlete. He's 47, he's been retired for a long time. His physique has barely changed. That is very, very impressive. So I thought, why not analyze that and talk about that a little bit? Hopefully you guys found this very useful. If you want to donate and buy me a coffee, that'll be very useful for me because I love my coffee in the morning to get me going. Um, and I really appreciate it. If not, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And by the way, look, I know you're not going to do this. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put a bit of pressure on you. Please leave a review. If you're on Spotify, just give me five stars. If you're on Apple, leave a written review. I don't even care if you give me a bad review, if you say you hate this podcast, but just give me something. I love it when you give a review. Anyway, guys, if you want any free fitness coaching and fitness tips, hit the link in my bio. I've got a free fat loss guide for you to get in amazing shape. Did I say bio? I meant description. Head right there. You know where to find it. All right, guys, Jav, it's the Spectrum of Health podcast. It's Jav here. Peace.